On today's Locked On Senators, welcome to NHL Trade Deadline Week. Don't worry, we'll have time for rumors, but we start our coverage discussing the Sens players that are not going anywhere. Now, some of these players are obviously untouchables, while others, that's up for debate. Well, let's have those and get contentious. That's coming up and more on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 994 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, you can follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube where we say hello and let you know that a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow, especially this week. Make sure that notification bell is on, because if and when the Sens make trades, we will have immediate reaction videos coming to you on YouTube. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. Bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Today is Monday, March 4th, Pilsy. We are four days away from the NHL trade deadline, and we have also just witnessed the Senators' fourth straight loss. Yeah, the, the losing continues to pile on here, Ross. At least the Ottawa Senators have made it very clear to Steve Steos what direction this team is heading in for this season, and... I don't know. It's obvious to me and you and seemingly lots of other Sens fans, but Steve Steo should be well aware at this point what this team needs to at least try to be successful moving forward. There's so many different areas that this team has been lacking in throughout this regular season. You look at the defensive side of the puck, things just have not been consistent. They got good goaltending on Saturday, though, against Philadelphia. It just wasn't enough this time. Both goalies had identical 923 save percentages, but Power play goes 0 for 5. Now, I know Philly went 0 for 4, but this trend of, of allowing the first goal, it's it's got to give somewhere. That's five straight games and 12 of the last 14 where you're just spotting yourself a one nothing deficit. Yeah, th- this team is constantly playing from, from behind to start the game. And Dross, it's not going to get any easier as they head to California, which we know their record on the road outside of North or uh, in East. North America, East of the Eastern time zone West. is not good. West of the Eastern time zone. West. <laughs> oh boy. That was not they're, a good ge- geographical sentence by me. They're t- they're two and oh East of the Eastern time zone. Shout out those preseason wins in Sydney and Halifax. True. True. Love that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thing, things are dire right now. And look, the, the coach simply doesn't trust his fourth line. Like that in itself is a bit of an issue from the standpoint that you got a guy injured or you get a guy who goes down early in a game, even though it was on your fourth line, but yeah. guys guys were just sitting all night. And like my favorite question is after the game, shout out Gord Wilson, guy means so well, um, where he's like, did losing Zach early in the game really affect things? Like, dude, he played two minutes on Friday night. Yeah, I mean, it's it affects things in the way that you're down a man what? now. There's but... more room on the bench? <laughs> yeah, hey. We, I, I don't want this to be a Zach McEwen no, slander. Uh, it, it's not a Zach McEwen segment. slander. He can't okay. do anything if he simply does not get ice time. Yes. He played okay. two yeah. minutes on Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tough. He actually had a sick goal last time there in Philly. But anyways, we get into that more on the postcast. I think that it's almost at this point a sense of kind of like wash, rinse, repeat right now for the Ottawa Senators <laughs> where it just feels like you know, you get these emotional victories over division rivals like the Tampa Bay Lightning and even earning a point against the Florida Panthers felt like a bit of like, OK, like, look, this team can battle with the best teams in the National Hockey League. But then then go, oh, 
and four against Washington, Nashville, Arizona, and Philadelphia. That's that's tough. There's no two ways around it. So look, Ottawa, that's a, a tough red eye to take after last night's game to go out west. Full day off today, always in the CBA after a back-to-back. You get a full day off. So get some vitamin D, hopefully a little sunshine on the West Coast. And then it's back to practice on Monday. And we know some guys have packed heavy for this trip. And with the trade deadline uh, fast approaching, still no update, obviously, on Brady Kachuk, other than the fact he was not able to play last night, ending the eighth longest Ironman streak in Senators history. He hadn't missed a game since before, or sorry, yeah, since before the pandemic, I believe. Um, which is pretty impressive in in and of itself. Well, um, I think the only games he missed, Ross, is when he wasn't signed. Right. So I don't know if that counts. Yeah, I don't know either. No, it doesn't count because 219 okay. consecutive games, that would be beyond that. Yeah. So eighth most in franchise history. So, hey, Brady's a battler, warrior, and he, he wanted to play, but obviously just couldn't couldn't battle through it for that game. And we'll see. I'd expect him to play Wednesday when the Senators are back on the ice in Hopefully Anaheim. Man. We're going to get to Brady Kachuk a little bit later in this show. But before we move on to the untouchables, as we begin our trade deadline coverage of note, tomorrow will be a trade target list. It's going to be who the Senators should go out and look for. And then on Wednesday, or maybe we'll flip this. One of the two. The next two days, it's going to be who should be on the Senators trade bait board. Like we got the TSN one, we got the athletic, we got the daily face off one. Like We're gonna who the send should trade away, you're talking about? Both. Okay. Both. And maybe when they're trading away player X, they should look to acquire Y. Like for Chikrin. Would you want draft picks or are you looking for more of a hockey trade? That sort of thing. We'll get into the next couple of days. It's gonna be all rumor mill all the time, but we want to squash rumors first with the untouchable list. So that's why yes. this is beginning off our coverage. But Pilsy. Saturday night in British Columbia. Where were you when <laughs> Vladimir Nikitin scored a goal? Senator's seventh round pick from this last draft had a, a simply horrendous start to his BCHL career. There's no two ways around it. His first four or five games were tough. Since then, this guy has been impossible to score on. And now he scored as many goals as he allowed on Saturday night. So stick taps to him, man. Not only that, Pilsy. It was shorthanded. Yeah, just a legendary play by our guy, Vladimir Nikita. Our guy? The... We're establishing him as our guy? Hey, Ross, if the Ottawa Senators have a goalie that not only can stop goals from going in, but score them himself, he's on our guy list. And we're hoping to get him on the show uh, here. We'll see how it goes, as obviously Vladimir Nikitin from Kazakhstan, his English is uh, improving, but not quite um, 100% here. So we'll see how that goes. But we definitely want to have a chance to chat with him. And shout out to Haley Ferguson, our friend yep. from the College of Sports Media. It's all about connections, right? In the biz. And she's the uh, the PR director for the Chilliwack Chiefs in the BCHL. So uh, also just a, a great talent and awesome person. So um, yeah, great, great stuff coming up with uh, Vladimir Nikitin coming on. And hey, we're Timmy's first English interview. So why not be Vladimir Nikitin's as well? Yeah, that would be great. Uh, but Ross, we got to talk about the hot streak he, he's been on since... Um, what is the World Junior? Uh... It's like Division One. It's like, so whoever wins that one, and they may have. Didn't they win it? Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah. So because they won it, next year they'll be in Ottawa for World Juniors. And then whoever loses the regular one gets demoted to this tournament. Yeah, so that's awesome. I mean, they won four of the five games there. And the only game they lost, I'm talking about Team Kazakhstan, was a 7-6 shootout loss to Austria. So they did pretty well there. And you know what? Sometimes you just got to play for your, your home country and get uh, that the juices flowing that way. So he plays for Kazakhstan, does very well, and then comes back and dominates in the BCHL. I mean... The wind, there's so many wins here. Pretty much the only, no, the only losses he has since returning from that World Juniors uh, little tournament were a shootout loss and an overtime loss. Everything else wins. Like, that's what you like to see from Vladimir Nikitin. Do you think he just had to get some best barmak into him? Um, the most popular Kazakh dish, which is a dish consisting of boiled horse or mutton meat? 
you know, that's, uh, that doesn't sound like my, my palate there, but I'm not going to judge. Maybe that was, that was all they, all he needed. Secret nice. to success. It was very nice to see a Sens goalie prospect score a goal. And if you haven't seen the clip, go check it out at Sens Central. This wasn't like, Hey, he made a save offensive player tries to pass it back with the goalie pulled. No, he shot that thing right in the middle of the net and the fans went wild. He went wild, dude. He did the drive by on the bench. He, he gave you got to, you got to, yeah, yeah. Get the blocker out. And yeah, oh, that's great. I mean, any, like we're a hashtag goalie friendly show. So any goalie goal is exciting, but when it's a sense prospect and uh, scored in, in that fashion, like Nikitin got there, it's extra great. So definitely if you haven't seen it, check it out at some central on Twitter. All right, Pilsy, the untouchables are next. You're listening to locked on senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel is the official online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network and the North America's number one sportsbook. You gotta use the best, best in class, FanDuel. That's what they're all about. And they they are the best because they got the best app. They got the best odds. You can bet on whatever you want. And they're always coming up with fun new bets to keep you interested. And if you're a new customer, you get $150 in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet that's 150 bucks if your bet wins you can bet on hockey you can bet on nba they got quick bets live same game parlays exclusive props and more so if you're looking to get in on the action in kind of the the dog days of the nba and nhl make spice things up a little fanduel is the spot for you so visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot fanduel official sportsbook partner of the nba Today's episode is also brought to you by our great friends at Shawarma Palace. You want to talk about spicing up your life? Talk about Shawarma Palace, where you are fuel-filled every time you go. I'm talking about the portion size, and I'm talking about the fresh ingredients that you can only find at Shawarma Palace. They are the place to go for Shawarma in Ottawa, and for great reason. In 1997, they opened up one shop, and they did so well, the community absolutely adores them that now they have seven different locations but the quality stays consistent throughout every single one when you go to shawarma palace you know what you're getting whether it's the sandwich or the platter you can grab any of their great cuisine and you know that it's going to be absolutely delicious shawarma palace is as passionate about the ottawa senators as you are it's the official shawarma of the Locked On Senators podcast. You can find them, whether it's on Bank and Hunt Club, whether it's at Bank, right near Baseball Town there in the Centertown area. My favorite location is on Rideau Street, right by Chapel. These are all places that you can find Shawarma Palace. They're also in the St. Laurent Shopping Center and you lucky Carleton University students. You can go right to the food court and get your Shawarma Palace. So make sure to visit any of Shawarma Palace's seven Ottawa locations today and check them out exclusively on Uber Eats to have it brought right to your door. Go eat like a royal today. Go eat at Shawarma Palace. Pilsy, trade deadline season is here. We've had lots of rumors, a couple deals so far, mostly lately Chris Tanna being traded to the Dallas Stars, and they gave him the old, hey, take your time, take your time, sort out the visas, pack your stuff. He still hasn't played a game for the Dallas Stars, yet being acquired last Thursday. Well, Ross, I mean, Dallas is only paying him a couple dollars out of their own pocket. So they're like, you know what? The de- the devils and the flames, they got your paycheck. So just come on over whenever you like. That's a big pickup. <laughs> I mean, he was top three on every trade bait board. So oh, yeah. for him to be off the board early, look, trade deadline season. And this is why talking about the untouchables is very important because how things are handled go a long way within the locker room. And I'd love to ask Mark my thought about this. We'll try to get him on this week, maybe yeah. Thursday, right before the deadline could work. However, did you hear Jacob Markstrom's comments the other day about how things are being handled? I mean, it reverberates through the entire dressing room, the way rumors and everything are allowed to spread. Big time. And I think it's tough for Jacob Markstrom, Ross, because he chose to go to Calgary as a free agent. And he had... I believe other offers. I think Edmonton was in the mix. Uh, There's probably lots of teams going after him. And he was like, nope, 
I think Calgary's the spot. He signed long term there. He thought things were going well. They make the playoffs a couple of years. And now he's involved in these trade rumors. And he's like, okay, you know what? Fine. Just trade me. If the Devils want me, I'll accept the trade and let's move on. And so he's probably telling his family, we're probably going to New Jersey. They're probably starting to kind of deal with the emotions of moving. And then all of a sudden they're like, ah, no, uh, never mind. Uh, Don't worry about that. We're not going to trade you. And he's like, well, which is it now? So I think that's fair that that's frustrating that if you finally come to terms with the fact that you're going to be moved and then you're not moved. And I don't know, it it would be a tough thing. It's sure. These are professional athletes that get paid millions of dollars to play a sport they love. So you, it's, you know, you got to take that with a grain of salt. But at the same time, this is their livelihood. They don't always get to choose where they're they're going to play and live and work and their families are involved. So I can definitely appreciate the frustration from Jacob Marks from there. On the other hand, it sounds like nothing's gotten out about the Ottawa Senators. There's certainly been people who, oh, they're, they could be interested in. Right. But from a standpoint of who could be on the way out, We haven't really gotten anything, right? At least publicly, Steve Steos has done a really good job of making sure that it's like, hey, the market's going to dictate what it will. But when it comes down to Tarasenko, they've only said great things about how he's involved himself in the team. Heck, he's been one of their most consistent players all season. So it feels almost counterintuitive to move on from him when you want more vets and more players who are good. But then if the market dictates that it's going to be a a draft pick or things that can help you moving forward, You have to consider it. But I think that the first thing we should do is give Steve Steos a hat tip for the ability to clog up any leaks that may have been coming out of the organization. I think that it it, there's a lot to be said. Think about all the talk when Pierre Dorian, it always goes back to me when it was the Dezingle Duchesne Stone. Every insider trading, we had an update of, oh, they offered this. This was declined. This is why it was declined. This is what they need. And like, they knew more about the negotiations in the media than I think the player may have known with the agent dealing with it. Yeah. Like it was, hey. it was getting ridiculous. That was awesome for us, though. Uh, yeah. Getting to follow along and Ross, if any leaks have been had in Ottawa, it, yeah, it seems like allegedly being dealt they've with. been walking the plank. Um, but the thing with Tarasenko, Ross, the one thing that maybe I'll, I'll disagree with the market dictating Tarasenko's deal. I don't think the market dictates Tarasenko's deal. I think the only thing dictating his deal is whether he wants to re-sign or not. If he doesn't want to re-sign, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. You have to trade him. If if he's showing interest that maybe he wants to uh, re-sign, then it's a little tricky because you don't want to hold on to him and then lose him for nothing. But at the same time, that's a player, like you mentioned, that the Ottawa Senators, they want on their team. And they want a guy like Vladimir Tarasenko to stick around. So I think the, the main caveat to Tarasenko is will he give them confirmation if he wants to resign and extend or not then you got to make your decision this could sneaky be one of those things and again he's definitely not on our untouchable list there's plenty of reasons why Vladimir Tarasenko would be moved but we always see this around the deadline as well a sneaky one or two year contract extension of a player that you thought was on the market and it's like there's, there, let's put it this way. There's no way Vladimir Tarasenko is an Ottawa Senator next week with his deal expiring at the end of the year. I would say it's very uh, unlikely. Yeah, because that you're playing a risky game for a team that has no or limited draft prospect pipeline. If you're not 100% sure, you probably need to trade him to recoup anything. All right, Pelzi. With that said, we'll have plenty of time to discuss the players whose names are on the market. But we asked the citizens on Twitter at Send Central, who are the untouchables? And then I put a poll for each one because I'm I'm very intrigued with the individual names that could be out there. And I put a few names on there almost as like a test. I want it to be like, eh, are they? And the citizens, I mean, more or less, I'm in agreement with, with quite a bit of it for the Ottawa Senators. Others, I was curious where it's like, I put Shabbat and then I put Chikrin and I'm curious to see like between these players who are who are more untouchable in terms of like, look, the untouchable list cannot be that big. This team is underperformed, but at the same time, the counter, I'm, I'm talking They're myself out 27th of 27th place in the league. They're 32nd in save percentage. Yeah. Like if the Winnipeg Jets had the Ottawa Senators goaltending this year, how many untouchables would they have? But no, they're first place instead. 
Yep. Goal like goaltending and special teams, you can you can solve a lot of discourse in hockey by pulling up a special teams and goaltending stats. Yep. Those are the two biggest parts of the game. But when your team stinks, then you have to look at everything around it because if it was as easy as putting Connor Hellebuck on a flight to Ottawa, they would have done that by now. Things always ain't that easy. But was before we'll get into the names in the third segment. But what was there one player that maybe with the polls that we put up at Sen Central, almost a thousand votes already, so a pretty good sample size here that surprised you with the citizens thought? Uh let me see. I got here. one if if you're still thinking. You you go ahead then. I want to take a look at all the, the numbers here. Twenty nine percent of the citizens do not consider the upcoming first round draft pick that the senators have. As untouchable. That might yeah. be the most untouchable. I'm with you, Ross. I think that is the one that stands out the most to me. Uh, that's surprising. But I. But the thing is, Ross, a lot of Sense fans are, are just frustrated. And they're like, I don't give a damn if the Ottawa Senators are going to draft a top defenseman that's going to be NHL ready in three years. F them I picks. can't wait three years. Yeah, F them picks. I want to use that pick to get a guy right now. So I can sympathize with those people. But at the same time, for me, that is a that is an easy, untouchable spoiler alert. And final point before we get to the actual names. We're building suspense here in the biz, yep. as they say. Um, Steve Steos, all reports are not panicked at all. And that's very important because I think Pierre Dorian would be in full panic mode right now, as a lot of the fans are, because we've seen the last seven years and how things have fallen apart and really failed to climb for any meaningful period of time. So I think this might be the, the most positive thing I can say about the Ottawa Senators right now is the people who are in charge making decisions, even Ryan Bonus, who's only been here for a year and a bit, they don't have the seven years of wait nope. on their back. They're coming in. What is it? Uh, clear, clear eyes, open heart. What's that old saying? Yeah, yeah. Clear eyes, open heart. Can't lose or something like that. I got it. Clear eyes, full heart, can't lose. Okay, so we were close. We were close. Alternate episode title name. Clear eyes, full heart, <laughs> can't lose. Well, hey, who can't leave? Who are the untouchables? We'll have that conversation next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Guys, you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next event. You're getting stressed out. You're like, oh, I have all these friends coming in from town. We have a big night uh, planned, but I don't have tickets yet. Don't worry about that because you got Game Time. It's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. There's so much to love about Game Time, whether it's the killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and best price guarantee. They take the guesswork out of buying tickets. It's the only app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchases. You see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. No surprises. All in prices show your total up front, so you're not getting through thinking you got a good deal, and then you get to check out, and you're like, this isn't what I thought I was paying for. No, none of that. And time is money, so you can buy your tickets quick. Just two taps, boop, boop, boom, tickets on your phone. It's that easy. Hey, and Pills. I, I just sure. bought game time tickets right now for six people to the Winnipeg Jets game. We're going to see Joey Dax play on Tuesday night in the peg and six seats together. Sometimes you're worried, like, will we get good ones? No problem with game time. And I looked two weeks ago and then I looked today, the games tomorrow, it went down 15%. So they're not lying when they say last minute tickets, lowest prices. Guaranteed. Well, there you go. That's part of the exclusive flash deals that they have and uh, take it from Ross. If Ross is able to plan and organize all that together for six people, you sure anybody can. can. Exactly. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code locked on for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. All 
right, Pillsy. Here we are. It's an early morning drop. The old record Sunday night. So if anything has happened, well, make sure you check out on YouTube because we will have immediate reaction videos to anything the Ottawa Senators do leading up to the trade deadline. And then at 3 o'clock, live show. 3 o'clock. Let's get after it. The chat will be elite. We always love interacting with the citizens. And we figure, look, we're going to get videos as they come out, immediate reaction. And then let's all congregate at the end and do a kind of a roster reset for the Ottawa Senators. A town hall meeting. Like, all right, here's everything that happened. How do we feel about this, everyone? Let's hear it. Over under two and a half trades for Steve Steos by Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Two and a half is the right number, I think, Ross. Um, I'm going to say two exactly, so under. I'm going to say over. Let's we'll figure out. Okay. Let us know what we should put on this because I think there should be should be some action here between you and me. I'm going to go Good. three or more. You do two or less. Life's too short. Wait, but the, the under. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but wait, and this doesn't matter because it's over under. But are you saying there's going to be three trades or more? But like, you're confident it's going to be more than three? No, 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 no. I'm confident there'll be three or more. Okay. And. <laughs> Maybe this goes counterintuitive, yeah, but sense. putting putting Kubalik on on waivers on Friday doesn't count as as a trade. That is not a trade. No, I agree with you. Oh man, that's a story for another day. Hey, he's he's got one point in his last one game, so maybe we should. Great lay off job fanning him. on that shot. Uh, shout out Caleb. Caleb had a, a graze a citizen for a long time, and we yep. we always appreciate it. He says he's Mike Hoffman without the shot, <laughs> which is not much. All right, Pilsy, let's get to the untouchables on this Ottawa Senators roster. The players that are building blocks that aren't going anywhere. I'm going to pull up the list. We'll pull up the citizens' answers. we got a cute little Wait. graphic for you. But, Pilsy, the captain is not going anywhere. My number one untouchable is Brady Kachuk. We saw what the power play looks like without him on Saturday night. Brady Kachuk's an untouchable and should not and will not be going anywhere. Yeah, just ask Steve Sales what he thinks about that. Uh, he was pretty clear uh, with his chat with Pierre Lebrun about what he thought about the rumors that Brady Kachuk could be moved. Before we do this, Ross, and don't pull up the, the list yet, I want to preface with maybe you and I might have looked at the term untouchables a little bit differently, but I I took it as like untouchable is, is very serious. Like for me, untouchable is... Someone calls Steve Stales. He picks up the phone. They're like, hey, we're thinking about uh, a trade for Brady. Boom. Hang up. Click. Like not even, you don't even listen. You're not even entertaining. You're not even, you know, trying to see if you can um, uh, turn a Brady Kachuk trade into a Tarasenko deal somehow. No. If they're asking about these, in my opinion, four pieces, instant hang up. Fade on site. So that's how I took the term untouchables okay i i think i was a little looser than you were i've got well no spoilers i've got two players that aren't untouchables on your list that are on mine or two and a half because you put an asterisk you're really getting crazy with those um but yeah i I think brady kachuk is is a no-brainer good place to start he didn't win the poll which i thought was a little bit gross nine percent of the citizens said he's not Wild. But there are three players who are over 90, and it's it's blatantly obvious that the three players that are top five draft picks for the Ottawa Senators are untouchables. Brady Kachuk, Tim Stutzla, Jake Sanderson. Do you have any qualms with those three? Zero qualms. The only qualms I have is that this was not unanimous, unanimously 100% untouchables across the board for Sens fans. The only thing I can think of, Ross, is... Is frustration being like, well, how can, and this is me paraphrasing for those sense fans that voted, they're not untouchables, is they're probably saying, how can anyone on this team be an untouchable when they've been absolute trash for years and they, they still are 27th in the league? So if that is your approach, then I, you know, I don't agree with it, but I can, I can understand where you're coming from. But certainly Timmy, Jake, and Brady are. Without question, untouchables on this team. Like I mentioned, instant hang up the phone, nah. 
And I think just because we've been seeing on social media, some people and, and well-respected people in the hockey world say like, oh, I don't know about, uh, I don't know about Timmy being an, an untouchable. Um, to put it in perspective, I think something that's important to note here is after uh, Nathan McKinnon had his, his breakout season, I mean, it took him a couple to, to really kind of take off. And I know Timmy hit 90 points last year, 39 goals last year. It's pretty disappointing that he's only at 14 yeah. right now zero power play goals, but to give up on Tim Stutzla in year one of an eight year contract, the richest contract in franchise history is some of the most asinine conversation I've ever heard ever. There are there areas of growth for him. Yes. Yeah. He's also 22 years old. There were players on Scott Wheeler's prospect pool rankings that just came out that are older than Tim Stutzla. Yeah. Asinine. And then Jake Sanderson is the number one defenseman for years to come. I mean, I think for Jake Sanderson, it's about learning how to be spectacular on more nights. But what he's doing as still, he's still 21, I believe. Yeah, because he's a July birthday. This is this is pretty remarkable. He's already at 133 games played and has 31 penalty minutes, including a five-minute major. Yeah. So for him to be able to play at the speed of the NHL without taking any penalties, playing against the toughest minutes, I mean, it's just a no-brainer to me that Jake Sanderson is an untouchable on this team. He's also poised to have much more points. He's got 27 points in 56 games so far, had 32 and 77 last year. So the offense is going up. He's averaging a full minute more. Like, to me, he's, he's going to be in that Norris conversation for years to come. So those three, untouchable. All the citizens seem to agree. All over 90%. Pilsey, let's yeah. let, let's just chalk off. We already discussed it, but 73% of the citizens say that first rounder is an untouchable. Untouch, you and I are unanimous on this. They need to keep that first round pick this year. Well, for selfish reasons, we're going to the draft, so it would be <laughs> awful if we go to the draft and that pick isn't there. But Dude, their, their last first round pick, with all due respect, Tyler Boucher is going through a lot of injury problems right now. But with all due respect, their last first round pick that has made an impact was Ridley Gregg. Four years ago, once the draft comes. Yeah. Can't, and this is a team that's been in the basement of the league this entire time. Cannot give up that draft pick. No, especially Ross, like when you zoom in and look beyond just the fact that this team needs draft capital and, and doesn't have a good pipeline, probably the biggest need for a prospect for this team is a defenseman. And this is the draft for defensemen at the top of the draft. So it, it just would be crazy to not capitalize on this situation. So yes, the Ottawa Senators 2024 first round draft pick is absolutely not on the table. Okay, so that's where we agree on things. Yes, sir. Now, I've got two more, and one of them is just for the simple reason that if they trade him, they're going to be looking to acquire someone who's the exact same at the exact same money. So it's just, it's less of an untouchable. It's more of a, it makes absolutely no sense to trade him. But before we tell you who that is, 89% of the citizens agree with me. Shane Pinto is untouchable. Shane Pinto has gone through a lot from injury to suspension, and he's still almost a point per game player. And he just won. He feels like a vibes guy on the team. He feels like a guy that every team needs. But he's also showing that he is a legit up and coming star in the league. So I've got him as an untouchable. Why do you not? I agree with all the things you said, Ross. Uh, I don't want people to get it twisted. I fully appreciate the value of Shane Pinto. I understand this team is much better with Shane Pinto. The only thing is I took untouchables very serious. If I have a different category, Ross, uh, which is listen, but not going to happen. And Shane Pinto is on the listen, but not going to happen. I'm not hanging up the phone immediately if someone wanted to talk about Shane Pinto. You know, you, you got to entertain the idea, but... It's not, it's not, unless they blow your socks off with an absolutely incredible NHL hockey type deal, it's not going to happen. So, the only reason he's not on my untouchable list is because I, I, I took the untouchable uh, term very seriously here. But he's on the listen but not going to happen list for me. 
the only thing that would have made me pause is if Josh Norris had never had injury history. And then you're like, yeah. look, you already have your top two. But with Josh Norris being so questionable with the, the continuous injury to the same part of his body, I'm like, dude, that ups Shane Pinto's value even more because yep. who the heck's going to play in your top six as a centerman if it's not Shane Pinto. So Shane Pinto, and, easy yes for me. And Ross, the the contract situation is a little cloudy for me with Pinto there. So that was another reason why, like if he was locked up to a reasonable deal, I think maybe I would change my tune. Not that I, I don't think the Ottawa centers are going to be able to find a deal for him or anything like that, but that's part of the equation for me. The other guy I had on mine is, is Artem Zub just for the fact that he's at a reasonable cap hit. They're already looking for a shutdown right side defenseman. If they trade the only one they have, with all due respect to JVD, if they trade him, they're literally going to be looking for the exact same type of defenseman and probably going to have to pay the exact same at 4.6 or more. So why not just, rather than look for the Zub you want, keep the one you have? Not to mention he's a super fan favorite as well. Yeah, that's totally fair. Uh, Zub also has a modified no trade clause, 10 team no trade list, and he's got three more years at 4.6 here. Uh, again, only reason he wasn't on mine is, look, this team needs to reacquire some assets. Artem Zub, a right shot defenseman at that uh, dollar amount for a, a good term, I think could bring in a lot of value. So I and would perfect, listen, listen, but not going to happen. Perfect pair for Jake Sanderson as well. One of the NHL's yep. top shutdown pairs. Dude, not to mention he's two points away from a career high for tying a career high. And he's only played. In 46 games, he set that career high yeah, with wow. 81 games played. So maybe he's got a little extra offense. We saw it in the KHL. This guy was putting up points. Yeah. So Artem Zub to me is an untouchable. But again, I understand where you're coming from. For me, it's just like it would be a waste of resources and a waste of time talking about trading him when then you're going to waste time trying to find his replacement. So that's where I'm well, coming from on it's that. It's similar, Ross, uh, other than the contract scenario here, it's similar to Dylan DeMello, right? Like it sucked trading Dylan DeMello because you knew as soon as you traded him, you got to try to find a guy like him. Now, obviously the difference there is he was a UFA and this team was in a much worse spot. So you, you got to respect that. But yeah, I totally get what, you, what you're saying and, and agree with your points there. All right, so this is where, well, actually, we've got one more. You've got the asterisk. Why Why is Claude Giroux to you not a complete untouchable? Because he is for me. The only, and I want to emphasize this, the only reason Claude Giroux is not an untouchable for me, again, he's on my listen but not going to happen list here, is if he wanted to leave, if he was looking at the situation in Ottawa and is like, this is not what I thought this was going to be. I want to try to get a Stanley Cup before my career is over. And he specifically voiced that he wanted to leave. Out of respect, I would grant him that that option and try to do right by Claude Truth. That is the only reason. Other Otherwise, he's the closest person to my untouchable list, Ross, even closer than, than Pinto and Zub and uh, guys you mentioned. The only thing is, if he if he wanted out, I would I would grant him that wish. That's it. Mini Claude Giroux, Ridley Gregg, 75% of the citizens would like to put him on their untouchable list. Neither of us have him. I know our guy Martian is saying that he would be on his list as well. My only reasoning for that is that you've got to at least listen. He's a guy who I would love to keep, even though like he's, he's learning the ebbs and flows of the NHL right now. It's been a yeah. bit of a downtrend in, in recent games. Not a lot of shots, a lot of minor penalties, but at the same time, He's a guy I would love to have, but we got to draw a line somewhere. That's my that's my only real thing about that. Yep, he's on the listen, not going to happen list for me as well, Ross. And I do think, unfortunately, similar to the scenario between Shabbat and Chikrin, you're going to have to choose one of those guys to stay, and you're going to have to trade the other one just for fit and in the cap and roster structure-wise. Unfortunately, unless, depends on what they do with Josh Norris, um, I think Shane if Pinto Josh Norris isn't in the mix. All of a sudden you, you can definitely have all three. Exactly. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and I actually kind of like Ridley at the wing as well, but that's story I, for another day. I prefer Ridley on the wing as well. So that, that would be a way that that would work. But I think just asset management wise, there may be a day where you have to decide whether you're keeping Pinto or Greg, just because you like, you don't just get 
good players coming in for free. You have to give good players up. And though those two are players that teams would be very interested in. And I think unfortunately one day they may have to make a decision there. It's not going to be anytime soon though. And again, yeah. like Ridley Gregg is as close to an untouchable for the fact that he's on his entry level deal next year as well. So this is, it's not even a conversation, and- but I get why, I get why people are, are more torn because it's like, we got to set the bar high here for, for untouchables. And he was the third first rounder selected in that draft. So like, well, with an August birthday, why don't we just count him as the 2021 first round pick? Does that make everyone feel better? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Let's move that over. Um, but he also, Ross, that's a guy I'm looking at, and I'm like, if there ever is a day the Ottawa Senators make it back to the playoffs, oh my God, do I want Ridley Gregg on that squad. So do I. Yeah. So do I, Billsy. It's the type of player that brings his A game in the playoffs, and, and you hope we get to see that sooner rather than later. So the poll is is finished. Well, it's actually still ongoing for another day on Twitter, but we've got the results here so far on our YouTube page. We're going to tweet out this graphic uh, late Monday or early on Tuesday, just the percentage that the citizens voted for each one of the untouchables and whether we agree or not. The only two, the only player that we haven't mentioned yet, Drake Batherson, 42% of the citizens said to keep him. Both of us say no, but again, that's one where it's like you listen, but at the same time, man, 4.95 for four more years, and he is really finding his rhythm right now. I think he's a guy that you'd love to keep if you can. Yeah, uh, he, he's on my listen, but not going to happen list here just because that contract is so good. I know there's a lot of people that are like hit Drake Batherson's defensive game and, you know, his game his rounded game has really declined recently. But the way he's able to score goals, the way he's able to uh, play on the power play, you got to keep a guy like that at a good contract. So for me, I really want to keep him. But you need to have some flexibility on moving some value out if you want to bring some value in. So that's why Drake Batheson is not an untouchable for me. It feels like if he gets moved, it's going to be for a goalie. Like probably in the summer, but it feels like that's the type of guy who you could really put on the table and be like, oh, interesting. Yep, agreed. So we'll see. Um, in terms of the citizens, the untouchables, 96% for Jake Sanderson, 94% for Tim Stutzla, 91% for Brady Kachuk. That's that's God tier. That's that's the 90 plus club. Although Shane Pinto is right there at 89%. Yeah. And then there's a huge drop off. Ridley Gregg at 75. Claude Giroux and the Senators first round pick at 73. Artem Zub at 60. And Drake Batherson at 42. So these are like the top nine. But Pilsy, I think one final thought for me, unless you have anything else on this list. Otherwise, I think there's one other piece of interest that fans would have that didn't make the poll because neither of them were above 43%. Thomas Shabbat has 30% untouchable. Jacob Chikrin at 12. I think if we ran this poll preseason, Chikrin would have been up close to 60 or 70 is my guess. Yeah, I agree with you. And we might have even been on that same side, Ross, uh, as both of us were high on Jacob Chikrin, but that's changing. Um Yeah, neither of these guys I even thought to put on the untouchable list. And the thing with Thomas Shabbat that's very interesting, Ross, his no-move clause starts July 1st. July 1st. So if you were thinking about moving him, this would be the time to do it. Not that I'm advocating for that. I think I would love to have a one-two punch of Sandy and Shabbat on the left side there. But there's got to be some give somewhere. Well, we'll see. Let us know in the comments. Who are your untouchables? Where were we wrong? Always like hearing about that. Get that at our list. Please, please do. That's why, hey, we put the shield in front of us of, hey, you guys voted. You guys <laughs> voted. <laughs> uh, but no, in all honesty, I, I feel confident with my list. I know Pilsy does as well. And we'll see what unfolds. Rumors coming up the next couple of days in terms of who the senator should target. Maybe target's a better word rather than rumors, but we will keep our ear to the streets as well and make sure we're passing on any information that we can. Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? I love trade deadline week because rumors are plenty and we're already starting to see some like little chess moves of look, Jonathan quick resigned for next year. So now they're set in goal. Now they can, they have got cost certainty at that position. Now they're looking how much money do we have and how, and what can we do to attack that? So the fact the sends are off for, for three days right now, I think we're going to hear a lot of noise around 
from what other teams are saying. Because I do think that Steve Steos and company are doing a pretty good job of keeping everything in-house. And just to add on to that uh, discussion, Ross, Elias Pettersson re-signing with the Vancouver Canucks changed a lot of the trade landscape there as uh, it was reported that Carolina had a deal that at least the Canucks were tabling. It was on the table for them. I don't know how serious it was because it would be have to be one hell of a haul to get a guy like uh, Pettersson out of Vancouver, but that was a big move, getting that contract done. Pilsy. Yes. Final thoughts from you, brother. Final thoughts for me is this is one of the weeks where I feel like we thrive. I, I, I think one of our best attributes of the Locked On Centers podcast is our reaction videos. We love doing them. Pretty much as soon as news happens, Ross and I are on the phone. Like when when Twitter something happens about the Sens trade wise, Ross and I are already talking on the phone and we're already planning a live reaction. And that's usually when we get the the biggest crowds in the chat and uh, we have a lot of fun vibing and just giving breaking our immediate down. thoughts, breaking it down. So as Ross always mentions, I'll do the little uh, social media plug here, turn that bell on notifications. So you know, when we're getting videos, ding, ding. And uh, yeah, let's, Let's let's get away from where this team is in the standings, how terrible they are on the ice. They continue to lose and get scored on first. All those things. Let's let's shelf that just for a little bit and let's try to build some excitement, some good vibes when it comes to the trade deadline. Well said, Pilsy. For more on the weekend games, if you're a complete sicko and want to relive it, you can go check those out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We really do appreciate all the support. Keeps us rolling when uh, times are tough in Sense Land. For today, though, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day. <laughs>